the world under the surface of the ocean. Even after hundreds of years of exploration and technical advances, it still remains mysterious. Let's dive in and look for something interesting, shall we? For billions of years, the oceans were the natural laboratories where various life forms were generated and selected in a trial and error process called evolution. This process created absolutely bizarre stuff, crazy body forms. Remember, things lose weight in the water, and that eases the constraints in terms of shape and directions. Also, colors can be quite wild, vivid, and vibrant. The coloration has two main reasons. It comes from the pigments that gather light energy for photosynthesis and also as a camouflage to blend in with the colorful environment. The deep sea creatures are usually not that colorful. However, life is not that simple. These huge bivalve mollusks named Tridacna have an amazing iridescent colors which are the result of special proteins that arrange in a pattern, utilizing the property of the light known as interference, constructive interference to be precise. These mollusks inhabit shallow waters and can become a trap, so watch your step. Other examples of iridescence in nature are mother of pearl, the peacock feathers, and wings of tropical butterflies. Tridacnas also have photosynthetic algae living in their mantles. The mollusk opens up and lets the algae catch some of the light during the daytime. Both photosynthetic pigments of the algae and iridescence likely help to minimize the impact of the excessive light and harness its power. By the way, living things that combine photosynthesis with other sources of food are called mixotrophic. Similar to octopuses, cuttlefish are mollusks and are very smart creatures. We have a whole video devoted to the cuttlefish. Their ability to change the pattern of their skin reflecting the mood of the animal is really cool. This tiny fish has suckers on its belly and uses it to hold on to the rocks. You will be surprised, but this flashy feathery creature is a worm. Orange and pink tube anemones are poisonous and are generally not recommended for aquariums. They are also non-photosynthetic and have to be fed with brine shrimp regularly, some say even daily. Say hello to the hooded nudie branch. It has large oral hood to catch its prey, plankton, tiny crustaceans, even fish or jellyfish, which are swallowed whole. Hooded nudie branch can swim by bending its body to one side and then the other, almost like fish or snakes, but more clumsily. Jellyfish. Have you ever wondered how these pieces of semi-transparent jelly can move so gracefully through the water? But these creatures are not as simple as they look like. They have a bunch of specialized cells in complex life cycles. The cone-shaped part of their body is called a bell or medusa, referring to Gorgon Medusa, a character from the ancient Greek myths. The bell has a ring of contractile cells. There are also special sacs on the rim of the bell, sensing the tilt of the body and sending the signal to the muscles to make corrections of the direction. Did you know that some jellyfish species can reach 2.5 meters in diameter and weigh over 200 kilos? Thanks for watching, by the way. We also have the version of this video without narration, just music to put you in a calm mood. The shark and rays move slowly and gracefully in the shallow water, especially the rays. They remind me of birds, and they often are seen in flocks or shoals, because we are talking about fish after all. Myriads of creatures, huge and tiny, live and die at the bottom of the sea without us even knowing about it.
and this is on our planet. What about more remote places in the universe? Nevertheless, I think as land spaces will become more crowded, humanity will turn to oceans, not only as a place to rip off the resources, but to cultivate, tend, and take care of. And we will encounter many natural marvels on the way, no doubt. Short tentacle plate corals come in different colors and are also known as disc corals or mushroom corals. Mushroom corals can move, slowly crawling in search for a better spot. Shrimp are busy creatures, always looking for food. It seems that they effectively use all of their legs. Imagine if humans had an extra pair. White spot anemone shrimp always stay close to its favorite anemone. The shrimp covers its body in mucus secreted by the anemone. It helps with protection against stinging tentacles, but not during the period when the shrimp molts. Clown or harlequin shrimp eat exclusively the tube feet of the starfish. Creepy. Do not put them in the aquarium with your favorite starfish. Shrimp's compound eyes have panoramic vision. Shrimp also have long and short antenna with mechanical and chemical sensors. They have to be alert. Their muscular tails are rich in protein making shrimp an attractive prey for many underwater predators. The coral banded shrimp, also known as coral boxer shrimp, are territorial. They fight each other and trespassing fish, but they are considered to be good cleaners because they are effective scavengers. Well, if you wonder how shrimp can control their legs, Try to imagine a sea urchin completely covered with thousands of tiny tubes that help it move. Truly mind-blowing stuff. The same goes to sea stars, which are kind of relatives of the sea urchins. Inconspicuous, leathery sacks on the bottom are shark eggs, in case you didn't know. Now, a little bit of freshwater fish. The name of the four-eyed fish comes from the fact that each of their eyes is separated into two halves, the top part to see in the air and the lower one to watch what is under the water's surface. Each eye has two pupils, this adaptation is good to hunt terrestrial insects. Paddlefish is considered a primitive fish and has a prominent feature, a rostrum or snout, hence the common name spoonbill fish. American paddlefish is a filter feeder, catching plankton with its wide open mouth. It looks scary, but it has no teeth and is harmless to humans who are snagging the fish from rivers in a dozen of states to collect caviar. The butterfly pleco graze on algae, but in an aquarium setting, they also like to eat blanched zucchini or cucumber. They are known to change the coloration, adapting to the environment. Thanks again for watching. Please subscribe and good luck.